Brad Moss, John Yu, and Mark Morgan. Welcome back, gentlemen. I want to read uh, a tweet from conservative activist uh, Charlie Kirk. He lists some names and asks a question. He says, Lisa Page, Peter Strzok, Hillary Clinton, James Comey, Loretta Lynch, Barack Obama, John Brennan. Now that Mueller has finished his investigation, it's time to investigate these people who have entangled America in a two-year national nightmare to destroy at real Donald Trump. Bradley, any chance any of that happens? Well, beyond the IG investigation, which is already ongoing, we've already had one IG investigation into how Hillary Clinton was investigated, and now we're having a second one that's going into this particular uh, probe. No, none of that's going to happen. That's pure fantasy. Look, this was a campaign that made clear its desire, its willingness at least, to conspire with foreign actors. You had Donald Trump Jr. meeting someone he thought was a Russian government proxy to get documents direct from the Russian government. You had Paul Manafort, the chairman, in August 2017 handing 75 pages of detailed polling data to a Russian intelligence operative, and you had Roger Stone telling everyone in the campaign he knew it was coming from WikiLeaks, which had gotten stuff from Russia. If there was ever a need for an investigation, this clearly was a campaign that was in completely caught up with foreign influence. Whether or not there was collusion is what we're waiting to find out from Mr. Mueller. Okay, and Mark, as someone who served for years and years in our FBI, what do you hope to find? I mean, you know, Bradley mentions the IG investigation. Catherine Herridge talked about it earlier. Um, we've seen these texts with, um, you know, Peter Strzok and Lisa Page and, and others, uh, Bruce Orr and others who've been involved. As a, a former FBI man yourself, what would you like to see? Yeah, so, I, uh, you know, with all due respect, I, I have to completely disagree with Bradley's perspective on, on what he just said. So from, from an investigative standpoint, not a political one, Look, the, there's absolutely enough information and evidence out there that this should be looked at. And the IG, that's where I do agree, the IG is looking at a lot of that. And I hope that through that IG report, in part, that the FBI does take a look at this. The, those recent texts that came out from, from the former Deputy Director Andy, Andy McCabe and, and Lisa Pay, uh, that that those are absolutely devastating. That in itself should be enough to have people take a look at this, a serious look at this, and open investigation. And I hope we see that. Okay. Uh, I want to play something from Senator uh, Dick Blumenthal tonight, a Democrat. Uh, his prediction, which he's been making yesterday and today and over time. Okay, we don't have that, but I'll just tell you what he said. Essentially, he said um, I, there are more indictments. There are potentially indictments in this president's future. Um, John, if it's not connected to this, uh, it seems that he's referring to the Southern District of New York, some of the state things that have been launched in New York as well. Um, how much should his legal team be worried about those possible avenues tonight? So first, I think we should take away from the Mueller report being finished is it's not a surprise there are no more indictments coming from Mueller because the regulations require him to issue his report when he's done. So he's now finished. There aren't going to be any more indictments involving Russian collusion and the Trump campaign. I, I, you know, Bradley has these uh, points, but Mueller looked at all of those facts and he decided there's nothing chargeable there. Again, I'm not going to second guess. Uh, Mr. Mueller's prosecutorial decisions there, and I don't think Congress should either. So the, the battleground is going to move to Congress with impeachment and oversight. The other battleground, as you mentioned, is going to move to the Southern District of New York. But these are all going to be matters, I think, which involve conduct by Trump before he was president. And so under governing law, uh, those prosecutions are going to have to be paused until his presidency is over. That's why impeachment is really the only thing that's going to happen to Trump while he's in office. Now, Southern District of New York might pull in other people like Cohen, like the Trump family that are not protected by this kind of presidential immunity. But I think if the battlefield moves in prosecutions to the Southern District of New York, that's not going to touch Trump himself. All right, well, we will stand by uh, to our legal panel, uh, Bradley, John, and Mark. We thank you all for uh, weighing in tonight with your perspectives. Very helpful. Absolutely. Have a good evening. You Thanks. too. Chris Stewart, Congressman, no Republicans invited. This is a Democrat-only yeah. conference call. Uh, what do you think of that? Uh, I think it's going to be the most depressing call that they've had for a long time. I think you got a lot of disappointed Democrats who were, have been hoping and making claims for years uh, as I think you played that clip of Beto O'Rourke where they've been saying very definitively, we have evidence of collusion and conspiracy. This president conspired with Russia. He should be held accountable. And now it turns out that once again, for, by the way, the fourth time, the fourth investigation, there's virtually no evidence of that. And it leaves many of them, I think, to have to answer some questions. Frankly, I think some of them should apologize to some of these innocent Americans who've had this cloud hanging over their heads and they've been accused of very serious crimes and again, without any evidence to support that. 
you know, they counted a lot of the Democrats. Well, look at all the uh, arrests and guilty pleas involving everyone from the former national security advisor Michael Flynn and Paul Manafort, the former campaign uh, chair, a former advisor Roger Stone and Michael Cohen, the personal lawyer, this, these Russian nationals who were fingered by Mueller, but obviously um, Russia wasn't going to let them come here uh, to face the music. That, that, yeah. uh, with those 37 indictments and or guilty pleas, uh, for the Mueller folks, mission accomplished, a tawdry yeah. uh, performance and conduct on the part of top Trumpites. What do you think? Well, I, I think there's some of these individuals who obviously had some Ill illegal activity, participated in illegal activity, and they should be held accountable for that. And I've never objected to that and never would. But that's not what we were told. We weren't told that Paul Manafort had some uh, illicit activities 10 years before he started to work for President Trump. We were told that President Trump and his campaign and people associated him were colluding and conspiring with Russian agents during the campaign. And none of that has borne out to be true. And it's also, Neil, I think fair to point out and to remember that for some of these individuals, they're accused of crimes and have been, in some cases, pled guilty of crimes, which occurred after Mr. Manafort was, or I'm sorry, Mr. Mueller was given the responsibility of acting as special counsel. Again, coming back to the point that none of these are crimes that were participated during the campaign, as we've been told for a couple of years that they had been. Would you support an effort to subpoena Bob Mueller himself to talk to, to your committee, other committees? That's something Adam Schiff has been kicking around. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I, I think that we probably should, although I, we're certainly not going to learn anything new. But I've always been in favor of transparencies. I've been saying for months that this report should be released. I would like the, the work we've done on the House Intelligence Committee, I would like for that all to be released for a couple of reasons. One is the American people deserve to know after, again, years of being uh, hearing these accusations, for them to know the truth. And the second thing is anything that isn't released, like if there's a, a paragraph or a sentence of the Mueller report that's redacted, people will point to that and say, see, that's where the conspiracy is. That's where the collusion is. They just aren't showing it. They're not telling us. And I think get it all on the table. Let the American people see it. Let them draw their own conclusions. And I think that's better for all of us if we do that. And if Mr. Mueller can add to that by coming before the committee, I would invite that. Although I don't think we're going to learn anything new and we're certainly not going to learn anything dramatic by having him appear before us. I'd be very surprised if that wasn't the case. Do you think, Congressman, the president has a right to read this report before you yeah. and your colleagues, Democrat or Republicans, do? Well, I, I do. And I don't think that should trouble people. This is a prosecutorial report. It is by its very nature biased. He's not there. He has no requirement. When I say me, he, I mean Mr. Mueller. Right. He has no re requirement at all or any obligation to put in any exculpatory information. This is just his view as he sought to prosecute a case. And I think it's perfectly fair for the president or for any defendant to have an opportunity to reply to that and to be able to say, well, this is, this is you know, some background information that casts it in a different light. Uh, I think that would be fair for the president. I think it would be fair for any individual to be able to reply to something before a, one, a very one-sided report. And that's not a criticism, Mr. Mueller, but I, for, uh, right. I want to be clear. It's just the nature of his work that, uh, that I think it would be fair to uh, allow them to reply to that. Congressman, thanks for coming on Saturday. We do appreciate it, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir.